finally, we are on to our last conference preview for the 2024 season, and it's Friday of week one. It took a little while, but this is our top-rated conference in all of college football, the SEC. That's right, the Southeastern Conference. There's about eight teams that could realistically find themselves in the hunt for the college football playoff here. In fact, it might be more difficult to figure out who's going to actually make the SEC championship game. Georgia feels like a shoe-in, but their schedule with games at Alabama, at Texas, at Ole Miss, it might say otherwise. Alabama's got a loaded roster, but a brand new coaching staff. Ole Miss, I mean, they're portal kings. Who knows what that roster will actually look like and how they'll coalesce. Uh, Texas and Oklahoma have not played schedules like this loaded ever. Like, I don't think. Uh, Missouri were the darlings last year. Can they keep that up? LSU replaces a lot on offense. They're still working on the defense, but you know they got talent. Tennessee has got Nico and Heupel's offense. You can't count out the Vols, especially with their schedule. But before we get into it, you guys know what to do. Make sure and like that video, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you subscribe to the podcast because I do shows over on the pod that you can't get here on YouTube. And of course, jump in those comments. Let me know what you think about each one of these teams who you think is going to win the conference, etc. If you want to keep up with my bonus content during the season, my stats, projections, picks as I make them, bonus podcasts, etc., sign up at bettingcfb.com. It is $5 a month or 50 bucks for the year, and it goes to supporting me being able to do more stuff on this site. So for each of these conference previews, I'm going to give you three reasons why each team might go over, three of why they might go under, and I'm going to give you the number of projected wins from my numbers. So let's go ahead and dive in. Let's start it off. Did not mean to play that again, but it is what it is. I'm I'm still getting the hang of this. <laughs> we start off with the Alabama Crimson Tide. Current win total is nine and a half. That is the same as the opener. Odds of plus one sixteen to go over. That's forty six point three percent probability, and minus one forty two to go under. That is the cur- uh, the current favorite at fifty eight point six eight percent implied probability. It's plus 700 to win the SEC. That is 12.5% implied probability. Now, for why they might go over, Jalen Milrow. Uh, he was the most efficient deep ball thrower in all of college football last season. He had 26 big-time throws and zero turnover-worthy plays. Kalen DeBoer's system, which thrives on vertical passing, that should amplify Milrow's strengths. It makes the Tide's offense more explosive than ever. On the other side, Kane Womack's defensive scheme it's an aggressive 4-2-5. It's a perfect fit for what Alabama's got already on the roster. They're athletic. They're versatile. Uh, the personnel is top-notch. I mean, you got top-tier talent like Deontay Lawson and Tim Keenan anchor in the front seven. Alabama's defense could surprise people, even with a significant turnover in personnel. And then, of course, there's recruiting depth, right? Even after losing several starters to the NFL and the transfer portal, this roster is friggin' loaded, right? The combination of returning stars and elite newcomers it ensures that the Tide can just continue on their merry way. I mean, they're number one in 247's team talent composite, so that's a, that's a pretty big deal considering all the people that they lost in the meantime. Now, for what they might not go over, well, there's uncertainty in the secondary, and that's a big part of it. I mean, you lost Caleb Downs, you lost Kool-Aid McKinstry, uh, Terrion Arnold, et cetera. The secondary does face pretty significant questions. you got a bunch of transfers coming in, Damani Jackson coming in from USC, you got Keon Sab coming in from Michigan, et cetera. And then you got some freshmen that are going to need to gel quickly to prevent opposing offenses from, you know, exploiting that. Uh, you do have inexperience at key skill positions, right? The top two running backs and the top three receivers from last season are gone. So you've got a lot of unproven talent that needs to step up. And I mean, you put a lot of pressure on young players, right? Justice Haynes, uh, wide receiver Kobe Prentice. Like that could lead to some inconsistency especially when you get into some of these tougher games like week three when they're going to uh, Wisconsin here. The schedule is pretty challenging, right? Alabama faces five ranked SEC opponents. Uh, you got road games at Tennessee, at LSU, at Oklahoma, and you got a home game against Georgia in there where they are, I mean, it looks like they're going to be underdogs in that spot. Uh, this is going to be a brutal schedule. It's a brand new coaching staff, retooled roster. That's a, that's a pretty big challenge. I've got them power rated number five in the country Conference rating is actually number three. Projected wins are 9.31. That is slightly under, with 11 games as a projected favorite and four toss-up games. So a lot to pay attention to on this. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm interested 
for sure. I mean, you guys know me. It is what it is. The Arkansas Razorbacks. Current win total is four and a half. That is the same as the opener. Odds of minus 122 to go over. That's 54.95%. And an even 100. Plus 100 to go under. That is 50% probability. Conference odds are plus 25,000. That's 250 to 1. That's 0.4% probability to win the SEC. Uh, they looked good last night. I will say that. 70 to nothing over Pine Bluff. Why they might go over? I mean, Bobby Petrino. His his offense was rolling last night. Absolutely rolling. It's a massive upgrade in offensive play calling. And his ability to tailor schemes to the players that he's got is pretty unmatched, right? He uh, he turns around offenses very quickly. It should inject some life into a Razorback unit that struggled mightily under Dan Enos at the uh, beginning of last season. Uh, their defensive line strength is pretty good, right? Led by Landon Jackson, that's a major asset. you got an improved pass rush, solid interior presence. This unit can create some pretty disruptive plays. Keeps Arkansas competitive in SEC matchups. And then the schedule is pretty favorable, honestly. I mean, despite the overall difficulty, there are winnable games on the schedule. That includes non-con games and SEC games against teams with brand-new coaching staffs. I mean, there's opportunities to get some wins in here and uh, and go over that four and a half. I mean, you got the one over Pine Bluff. You got Oklahoma State this coming week. You got UAB. At Auburn is not exactly, I mean, it's not a guaranteed loss. Texas A&M, neutral, that's not a guaranteed loss. You got Tennessee and LSU at home, not likely to be wins. Mississippi State on the road, Louisiana uh, Louisiana Tech at the end of the year. You know, playing Texas and, and Missouri late is not ideal, but you get the point. Now, for why they might go over their win total, or why they might go under, excuse me, uh, offensive line, right? Offensive line issues were glaring. Arkansas was near the bottom in the country in sack rate. And you brought in some new additions, and, and certainly there's hope there, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to gel quickly enough to protect a new quarterback, especially in Week 2 against Oklahoma State. So we'll see exactly what they look like. Uh, there are vulnerabilities in the secondary, right? Still a significant concern there. you got key departures, history of allowing explosive plays. Um, and you're playing against some teams that are going to be throwing the ball a lot. Tennessee, LSU, Mississippi State, Ole Miss. Yeah, it's... It, that could be a, a big point of concern. And then there's the uncertainty of quarterback, right? Taylor Green comes in from Boise State. He's got athleticism, but his accuracy and decision-making are still very unproven, especially in the SEC. Uh, if he doesn't adapt right off the bat, and he looked great last night, but the offense could face some similar issues as last season, and that would not be good. I've got a power rated number 43. Their conference rating is number 14 out of 16. Projected wins, I've got them over five and a half. Uh, four games as a projected favorite, six toss-up games here. Arkansas, I don't think, is as bad as everybody wants to make them out to be, but whew, that does not mean that, they're, uh, that their record will be great because, I mean, that's a brutal schedule. The Auburn Tigers, current win total seven and a half. Odds of plus 124 to go over, that's 44.64% probability, and minus 152 to go under, that is 60.32% probability. Conference odds are 80 to 1 to win the SEC. That's 1.23% probability on that. Now, why they might go over? Hugh Freeze, right? Offensive control. Freeze has taken full command of the play calling. The offense did show marked improvement in the latter half of 2023. And when you bring in the elite receiver talent that they did, uh, that's only going to amplify that upper trend, right? Special teams excellence, I think that's a big thing. Uh, they're among the best in the nation. It could be the difference maker in some of these close games. It, they are going to be good at flipping field position. Stuff like that really counts towards, you know, a close game. And there's several close games uh, that'll be on the schedule. So stuff like that is certainly going to be in their favor. And then they've got a favorable home schedule, right? It, they got a schedule with eight home games. Most of them are winnable. It gives them a pretty strong foundation to push past that projected win total. Now, as far as why they might go under, the quarterback ceiling, right? Peyton Thorne, uh, he's got limitations. That might be putting it mildly, but that might cap the offense's potential, especially against some of these top SEC defenses. Uh, can he get the ball to the receivers? That's the biggest question. Defensive secondary, right? You got significant turnover in the secondary. There's a lack of proven depth there. Uh, the defense could struggle against the pass. It leads to potential breakdowns in critical games. Uh, there's, there's no telling, right? And then the offensive line. They struggled in pass pro last year, and if those continue, uh, it could spell trouble in some pretty high-pressure situations. And, I mean, Peyton Thorne is not exactly the most accurate or anything else. So 
Uh, their rating, I've got them power rated number 25 in the country. Conference rating is number 10. Projected wins, I've got them at 7.03, so slightly under. Six games as a projected favorite and four toss-up games. And those toss-ups, uh, you know, uh, I've got them an underdog to Kentucky. i got them an underdog to Texas A&M. i got them an underdog to Oklahoma. But those are home games. So, eh, no, Kentucky's not a home game, but you still, you get the point. Uh, there are spots here where they can get some wins, and they can, they can impress. They can do that. The Florida Gators, their current win total is four and a half, and that number has not moved since it opened at multiple books at that. I think it was five and a half early February or March. Got bet down immediately, stayed there. Odds of minus 152 to go over. That's 60.32% probability, and that is certainly the favorite right now. Plus 124 to go under. So 44.64% probability on that. Conference odds, plus 8,000. So 80 to 1 to win the SEC. That's an implied probability of 1.23%. And honestly, I think it should be even higher, like a, or lower, I guess, as far as the odds are concerned. Um, I'd probably do like 10,000 on this, 100 to 1. Because I that schedule is just absurd. Uh, not for why they might go over their win total. Quarterback play, right? Graham Mertz coming off a season. He posted a 20 to 3 touchdown interception ratio. The stability, leadership at that position, that is paramount, right? You got a solid connection to the new receiver, uh, DK. And, you know, you brought in another receiver, Elijah Badger. Or Mertz could certainly elevate the passing game even further. And I think it's going to give the Gators a better shot in close games. Dominant running game potential, right? The Gators do return seven linemen who started at least once last year. That's a that's a pretty big and pretty experienced front. Uh, Montreal Johnson Jr. dealing with an injury. That's not good, but they got other guys back there. Um, if Florida can control the clock, like they they can certainly grind out some wins. And then there's the youth movement, right? They invested in young talent last year. Freshmen contributed significantly. That could pay dividends this season. You got players like Eugene Wilson III, along with several other blue chip recruits. They're stepping into larger roles. The Gators might be able to find that spark that they need. Now, for why they might go under, schedule, schedule, schedule. I mean, it's one. Of, it's the toughest schedule in the country. Six of the top seven SEC teams, and then non-conference games against Miami, UCF, and Florida State. I mean, it. I don't know why they booked this schedule the way that they did, but even like a even a top fifteen team would have struggle when or would have trouble winning nine games against this. And and Florida is good, but I don't know if they're good enough to get through this. I mean, this is brutal. Uh, the offensive line, I talked about them being massive and experienced and all that, but also, I mean, they they did struggle last year, and it's still a question mark. You got key starters that transferred out. You got some new faces stepping in. You got, you know. Any any kind of issues in protecting Graham Mertz or opening up lanes for the running game, that, that could certainly derail this offense. And then on defense, you know, despite some talent upgrades, the defense is still a concern, especially in the secondary and the linebacker positions. I mean, if Florida continues to struggle with, with big plays and with tackling like they did last year, uh, they had a lot of high-scoring losses last year, and they play a lot of big-time SEC offenses this year. It's going to be rough. I've got them power rated number 27. Their conference rating is number 11. Uh, Projected wins, I've got them at 5.2. So I've actually got them going over. And I've got five games as a projected favorite, seven as a toss-up. And toss-up games, for those that don't know, are one possession game. So anything eight points on either side, eight points or less on either side, I consider that to be a toss-up. So, so yeah. So Tennessee, I've got them an 8.14 point underdog on the road. That's not a toss-up because it's over eight points. But still, there are spots where they could potentially uh, win some games here. All right, moving along. The Georgia Bulldogs. Current win total, 10.5. That's the same as the opener. Odds of minus 122 to go over, so 54.95% probability. And an even 100 to go under, that is uh, 50% probability on that. So the over is the favorite here. They expect Georgia to get to 11 wins at the sportsbooks. Uh, conference odds are plus 170. That's 37.04% probability to win the SEC. Now, as far as why they might go over, I mean, it is pretty self-explanatory, right? We'll start off with this, though. Uh, elite returning talent, right? 85% of their production returns. That includes the quarterback, Carson Beck. You got nine of the top 13 tacklers back. They are stacked with high-level, experienced talent that understands how to win big games. Uh, the continuity, especially in the trenches, I mean, it's... 
they got the foundation to be able to dominate. They got top-notch reinforcements, right? They aggressively filled key roster gaps through the transfer portal. Uh, Kirby brought in, you know, standout players like running back Trevor Etienne, versatile tight end Benjamin Yurasek. Uh The additions ensure that Georgia's offense is going to remain explosive, even with losing guys like Brock Bowers. And then you got unmatched depth and, and coaching. Georgia's depth is, I mean, absurd, right? They got a two deep that's filled with all Americans and future NFL stars and five star recruits that are ready to step in. You combine that with an elite coaching staff that has consistently produced top five units on both sides. And uh, the Bulldogs are pretty well equipped to handle a really challenging schedule, which is, you know, we're going to get into that. Now, for why they might go under, I mean, the road schedule is ridiculous at Texas at Alabama, at Ole Miss, I mean, there's no margin for error there. The road challenges could pose uh, some pretty big risks to an otherwise dominant season. I mean, you lose two of those, and all of a sudden, maybe you're not in the SEC championship game. Uh, another question here is the skill positions, right? They, they brought in strong replacements, but you lose guys like Brad Bowers and, and Lad McConkey. Uh, that could lead to growing pains early in the season. If the new additions don't gel, I mean, the offense might struggle a little bit. So you got to make sure that that chemistry with with Beck and whoever he's throwing to is going to be there. And then you got defensive backfield concerns, right? They lost three key defensive backs in the first 90 picks of the NFL draft. So there is some uncertainty there. Uh, but there is plenty of young talent that's going to step up, I would imagine. Uh, but any coverage struggles, and, and they're going to have – I mean, it could cost them a win. Texas, Alabama, Ole Miss, Tennessee – uh, all of those have the kind of players at wide receiver that could give this secondary problems. With that said, I do have them power rated number one. I do have their conference rating number one. Because of the schedule, I've got their projected wins at 10.11, so that's slightly under the 10.5. But I've got them a projected favorite in all 12 games, and I've got three toss-up games. The toss-ups are all on the road, Alabama, Texas, and Ole Miss. So Ole Miss, I've actually got them favored by more than a touchdown. Texas, less than a point. Alabama, one and a half points. Uh, I know that the current line on those is is different, but still. Uh, we'll move on ahead. Let's go to Lexington. The Kentucky Wildcats. Current win total six and a half. That's the same as the opener. Odds of minus 122 to go over. That is 54.95% probability and an even 100 to go under. So implied probability there is 50%. Conference odds, 100 to 1 to win the SEC, so 0.99% probability. As for why Kentucky might go over, the defensive front, like the front seven, is nasty. I like it. Uh, you got Deion Walker. He's generated 51 pressures from the nose tackle position. Uh, Derek Jackson, J.J. Weaver is coming back as well. They can dominate in the trenches. They can keep the Wildcats in pretty much every game. They've got an experienced offensive line. You know, you got four starters back on the offensive line. That includes key players like Eli Cox and Marquise Cox. Uh, I, I think the big blue wall should be back, right? Veteran group should provide solid protection, open up running lanes, all the kind of stuff that Kentucky is used to doing under Mark Stoops. And they got a favorable home schedule, right? I didn't write down the offensive lines, uh, offensive line coach's name. It's Eric. I can't. For, I cannot remember for the life of me. It's been a very long week, guys. Uh, but Eric is back. He was at Alabama for a couple of years, but he's back now, and Kentucky had their best offensive lines under him. So uh, there's a favorable home schedule here. Like it, the win total may hinge on the home games against South Carolina, against Auburn, and against Louisville at the end of the year. Those games are really big, right? All three of those matchups at Kroger Field. Kentucky traditionally performs pretty well at home. They're in a good spot to be able to win those games and go past that win total. Now, for why they might go under, quarterback uncertainty, right? It, Brock Vandegriff, a former five-star transfer from Georgia, he's unproven. Only 21 pass attempts since 2021. We think he's going to be good, but, you know, if he struggles at all, the offense is inconsistent, that's going to be tough against these SEC defenses. Uh, tell me if you've heard this before. The secondary is a vulnerability, Right, you got key returning players. You got Maxwell Hairston, uh, but but the secondary struggled last year. It was in the bottom ten nationally in several of the past defense metrics. You got a schedule that goes up against elite quarterbacks Quinn Ewers, Carson Beck, etc. That secondary could be a major liability. And then it's all the SEC schedules are for the most part, but this is a brutal schedule. You got road games at Texas, at Tennessee, at Ole Miss. You know. I, it's a tough slate. 
any slip ups in these winnable games, and you're not going to get to that win total. I've got them power rated number 29. Uh, their conference rating is number nine. Uh, projected wins, I've got them at 6.98. No, sorry. 6.48. So it, it basically right on target with a six and a half. So it's slightly under with eight games as a projected favorite. Now I've got seven on here. Hold on. What did I do wrong? Da -da -da -da. Now I've got them seven. Yeah, projected favorite in seven games. I've got them in four toss up games. And yeah, very interesting. Very, very interesting. The LSU Tigers. Current win total is nine and a half. Odds of plus 138 to go over, so that's 42.02% probability, minus 170 to go under, that is implied probability of 62.96%, so the books are thinking it's more likely they'll go 9 and 3. Conference odds are 10 to 1, that's an implied probability of 9.09% on that. Now, as far as why LSU might go over their win total... The offensive line is a big part of that, right? One of the best in the country, anchored by potential All-Americans. you got Will Campbell and Emory Jones. Uh, the unit's going to give quarterback Garrett Nussmeyer the protection he needs to be able to thrive and, uh, and help maintain a potent offense just like they had last year. Uh, Brian Kelly, year three magic, right? Brian Kelly's third year at a program has been a breakthrough season. You saw it at Central Michigan, at Cincinnati, and at Notre Dame. With his track record and the talent on this roster, LSU could take another leap forward this year. Uh, and the schedule is favorably positioned, right? They avoid Georgia. They avoid Texas. They get key games against Alabama, Ole Miss, and Oklahoma all at home. It sets them up well to navigate, a, or to navigate a, a pretty challenging SEC slate and potentially exceed some expectations. Now, as far as why they might go under, defensive uncertainty, right? The, it was a significant liability last year, and that is putting it mildly. And even though they hired in Blake Baker from Missouri, there are some pretty major questions about whether or not they've got the right roster the right personnel to support a championship run the secondary remains a concern after last year's struggles defensive tackle and eh, we'll see so it, we're a lot of questions here um you could see a regression on offense right you lost a heisman trophy winning quarterback and two first round receivers if anybody's positioned to be able to withstand that it would be lsu garrett nussmeyer's got potential uh, but the like the receiving core might not be as good as last year and you got a new offensive coordinator because Denbrock took the uh, Notre Dame job. Like the offense could take a pretty noticeable step back. And then you got a pretty tough November and October, right? The the back half of LSU schedule is just rough. You got after you go to Arkansas, you got Ole Miss in the middle of October at home. But then you play at Arkansas and at Texas A&M back to back. You got a bye week. But then I mean, listen to this: Alabama at Florida. You do get Vanderbilt, and then you get Oklahoma at home. Even though you get three of those games at home, that's that's a brutal stretch, right? I mean, Arkansas, uh, you got Ole Miss, A&M, Alabama, Florida, and Oklahoma all in there. If LSU stumbles early, this stretch in the back half could be real difficult to be able to get the double-digit wins. Their rating, I've got them power rated number 12 in the country, but their conference rating is number 6. That's how stacked the SEC is. Projected wins, 8.27, so I've actually got them going under by just a touch. 10 games as projected favorites in eight toss-up games. And that's a lot of yellow on this thing. So eight toss-up games here, eight games projected to be within one possession. That is pretty wild, if you ask me. The Mississippi State Bulldogs. Current win total is four and a half. That is the same as the opener. Odds of plus 152 to go over. That is 39.68%. And the under here, minus 188, that is the favorite uh, 65.28% probability on that. Conference odds, 500 to 1. That's 0.2%. So I don't think Mississippi State is going to be going to Atlanta this year. As for why they might go over the win total, though, I mean, Jeff Levy's offensive schemes, right? A high tempo, aggressive offense. It could catch some defenses off guard, uh, especially early in the season. Arizona State, Florida, Texas, the, some of those. Maybe you find some, some unexpected wins there. The non conference schedule is uh, winnable. Right, you got four winnable non-con games. You got UMass, Eastern Kentucky, Arizona State. Uh, you got spots here that you will be able to find some wins. Toledo, two. Now Toledo, you could also lose to, but regardless, I think the talent is gonna is gonna help them out there. But they should be able to get on a roll before they get into the toughest part of the schedule. And then uh, they play SEC teams that have defenses that are uh, exploitable. We'll say 
Uh, the secondaries, you know, these teams, Arkansas, Tennessee, et cetera, their secondaries have struggled. Lebby's going to throw the ball, right? He is going to – it's going to be pass heavy. And you got a shot at being able to outsource some people in potential shootouts if your offense is clicking, right? Now, for why they might go under, complete, complete roster overhaul. All new personnel. New head coach, new offense coordinator, new defensive coordinator, and an entirely new starting lineup, right? Yeah, there's a steep learning curve. But we've seen teams come out the gate hot with with stuff like this, so you never know. Uh, there are depth and experience issues, right? Uh, key positions like quarterback and on the offensive line, not a lot of experience there. They're going to be vulnerable uh, to that grind in the SEC. And then there's defensive uncertainty, right? You're transitioning to a new 3-4 defense under a first-time solo defensive coordinator. Mississippi State could face significant challenges, especially with a secondary that's been gutted by departures. I've got them power rated number 60. Their conference rating is number 15 out of 16. Projected wins, I've got them at 4.64. So I've got them slightly over with three games as a projected favorite and four toss-up games. So only four games on the schedule where I think it's going to be close uh, but I've got him a, a favorite in three games, and we'll see. We'll see. Jeff Lebby is in for it right now. Tickets to everything are expensive these days, and I know you're like me. You want to catch a big game or a concert, maybe even tickets to a show. Why not save some money every time you buy tickets? Visit Ticketsmarter.com or use the Ticket Smarter mobile app and use the promo code WCE10 that's WCE10 to save $10 on any order of $100 or more, or use WCE20, that's WCE20, to save $20 on an order of $300 or more. It's not a one time sign up bonus or anything. Seriously, every time you buy tickets, you can save money on already great deals. So do yourself a favor think smarter with Ticket Smarter. The Missouri Tigers, current win total 9.5. That's exactly what it opened as. Odds of minus 110 to go over and under this 52.38% win probability, well, implied probability on both sides. Conference odds are plus 2,500, so 25 to 1. That is 3.85% probability on that. Now, for why they might go over, you got an elite returning offense, right? Brady Cook is back at quarterback. You got a loaded receiving core. Luther Burden is a beast. That offense is primed to be one of the best in the SEC. Uh, the offensive line, you know, you got some key transfers in. Marcus Bryant, Caden Green, uh, they should provide the protection needed to keep this unit humming, uh, along with the guys that came in at running back, right? Nate Noel from App State. Um, you got Carroll that came in from Georgia State. Both of those guys more than serviceable to take over for Cody Schrader. Uh, favorable schedule, right? I mean, you look at this thing, a lot of green on here. Um, they benefit from one of the easiest SEC schedules, maybe the easiest SEC schedule. They avoid Georgia and LSU. They avoid Texas. Uh, yeah, they're facing a manageable non-conference slate. This team could easily be 6-0. Easily be 6-0. The only thing standing in the way of that really is a game at Texas A&M. But, I mean, they got a strong chance to get there. And, uh, and then you got Auburn at home after that. And so I'm very curious what that's going to look like. Uh, they do have defensive potential, right? They did lose several key players, uh, but you brought in Corey Batoon as defensive coordinator. That's a fresh, aggressive approach here. If the defensive front that's led by Johnny Walker Jr., if they can hold up, they could surprise some people with another formidable defense even after losing Blake Baker. Now for why they might go under, probably a defensive regression is going to be number one, right? It, significant turnover there. They lost key players to the NFL. I think they lost five guys. Uh, it was their their top edge rusher, linebacker, and then three defensive backs. The secondary in particular could struggle against some of these high-powered offenses, right? It, it make it tough to sustain last year's defensive success. You got quarterback depth concerns. Like, Brady Cook is a solid starter, but you got a, a, the lack of proven depth behind him, right? If, if Cook were to get injured, your next best option is probably Drew Pine, and I don't know if he is good enough to gets you through an SEC schedule. Just a guess. Uh, and then they do have tough road games, right? Despite an easy overall schedule, Missouri faces some tough, tough road games at Texas A&M, at Alabama, uh, at South Carolina, at Mississippi State. They, they, it's a very difficult schedule. This is tough stuff, you know. Got to go play at UMass. Like, they're going to beat UMass, but my gosh, why would you put yourself in that position? It's, I, I've never. This is an ACC mindset. Uh, the, the tough environments here on the road, like... You don't expect to lose to South Carolina. You don't expect to lose to Mississippi State. 
but you could find yourself in a dogfight for sure. I've got them power rated number 11, but their conference rating is number 5. Projected wins, I've got them at 9.09, so I've got them under. Uh, but I do have them a projected favorite in 10 games with three toss-up games. So that's that's an interesting one. Interesting one to pay attention to. We keep going with the Oklahoma Sooners. Current win total seven and a half. Uh, odds of minus 110 to go over and 110 to go under. This 52.38% probability on both sides. Conference odds, plus 2,500. Same as Missouri. That's 25 to 1, 3.85% probability. Now for why they might go over. Explosive offense, right? And, and it's new talent that's coming in. You lost some key players. Obviously, Dylan Gabriel is at Oregon now. But Jackson Arnold is a dude. They are stacked with explosive talent like Gavin Salchuk, Deion Burks uh, that came in from Purdue. If the offensive line gels quickly, because that's very transfer heavy there, this unit could be one of the most dynamic in the SEC thanks to Seth Luttrell, former North Texas head coach. He is the new offensive coordinator there. Took over for uh, Jeff Levy, who is now at Mississippi State. You do have elite defensive turnaround, right? Brent Venables has transformed this defense into a very disruptive force. And the guy that is leading this veteran group is Danny Stutzman at linebacker. If the defense continues to progress, certainly Oklahoma could surprise some people and uh, and go well over this total. They got a favorable early schedule, right? It, it, it's a more than manageable start to the season. You got Temple, you got Houston, you got Tulane. Now, it could help them build some momentum and some confidence before Tennessee comes to town, and then they got to go to Auburn before they get their first bye week right before Red River. Now, as far as why they might go under, it's a pretty brutal SEC schedule, right? You, you've you seen, I'm sure, in the offseason, the back and forth of what Texas's schedule is supposed to be and what Oklahoma's is. And Oklahoma got a gauntlet, right? They got games against Alabama, against LSU, against Tennessee, uh, as well as some tricky road games at Ole Miss and Missouri, right? And it's those are not just tricky. I mean, those are just difficult-ass games. Uh, it could be difficult to reach eight wins based on who you're actually playing. The other reason why they could go under, the offensive line. The entire offensive line is being rebuilt. You're going up against SEC defenses, that could be an issue because if the line struggles, that offense is going to be in a uh, world of hurt. Uh, you cannot let Jackson Arnold get hurt, right? And then it, speaking of Arnold, like – Super high expectations, right? Talented, but unproven. He was in, inconsistent in the bowl game against Arizona. Like, if the if he makes a bunch of mistakes in the SEC, this offense could be in some big trouble. Big, big trouble. I've got them power rated number 10. I've got their conference rating at number 4, actually. Uh, projected wins, I've got them at 8.2, so I've got them going over. Seven games as a projected favorite. Seven toss-up games. So i got seven coin flips on here. This is going to be wild. I cannot wait to see what Oklahoma does with an SEC schedule. Cannot wait. The Ole Miss Rebels, current win total 9.5. That is the same as the opener. It is sat right there. Odds are minus 110 to go over and under. This 52.38% probability. Conference odds, plus 800 to win the SEC. 8 to 1. So 11 point, well, 11.11% uh, to win the SEC. Now, why Ole Miss might go over? Elite offensive continuity. Right, Lane Kiffin's offense, it's led by Jackson Dart. you got a stacked receiving core that includes Trey Harris and Juice Wells that comes over from South Carolina. Uh, it returns with significant continuity. you got, you got key transfers that came in. Uh, these are, I mean, it's, the attack is potent, right? Very, very potent. you got an experienced offensive line. Uh, you got a bunch of P4 transfers that came in here. I mean, it's, you, there's talent all over the roster. This is the strongest roster that Ole Miss has ever had. Uh, is the defense is strengthened, right? You got guys like Walter Nolan coming in from A&M, uh, Princely, and we'll just call him Princely from Florida, the edge rusher. Uh, the defense has the potential to take a major leap forward. Uh, the trenches are the biggest thing, right? That's the key to competing against teams like Georgia and Oklahoma and LSU, et cetera. Like, you just got to have those kind of guys. Uh, there's a favorable early schedule here. Like, it, it, they're going to build some momentum. They got five winnable games right out the gate before you get into any of these tough SEC matchups. I mean, look at that. Furman, Middle Tennessee, Wake Forest, Georgia Southern, Kentucky. All of those are at home. Like, all of those should be wins. Uh, you you build success early. You got some momentum going into the tougher games when you go to South Carolina, to LSU. Now, for why they might go under their win total, close game regression, Right. Ole Miss benefited from a bunch of close wins and, and a plus 11 turnover margin. The ball ain't always going to bounce favorably, right? 
So when you're playing against some of these tougher SEC teams, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, there is defensive uncertainty, right? You got some upgrades here. Uh, the back end of the defense is certainly a concern. It, when you're looking at these uh, these high powered offenses that they're going against Oklahoma, LSU, Georgia, even Mississippi State, right? If the secondary struggles, that could be an issue. That they they won't be able to win some of those key games if the secondary doesn't doesn't buck up a little bit. Uh, they got tough road games and trap games, right? You got a road game at South Carolina the week before LSU. Uh, you got a, a game against Arkansas on the road right before you play against Georgia at home. You play Florida right before Mississippi State. I mean, there's trap games, absolute trap games. Uh, and if they're not careful, you get caught looking ahead, you could be in trouble. The rating, I've got them power rated number 13. I've actually got them power rated uh, number 7 in the conference. Projected wins, I've got them at 8.78. So I, my numbers aren't exactly buying the hype of the uh, the new transfers. But I've been wrong before. I will be wrong again. It is okay. Uh, I've got them a projected favorite in 10 games and six toss-up games. And just right there in the middle of the schedule after Kentucky, everything is a toss-up until they get to Mississippi State. It's the way it goes. way it goes. All right. Let's move into the S's. The South Carolina Gamecocks. Current win total, 5.5. Uh, the odds of minus 134 to go over. That's 57.26%. And plus 110 to go under. So 47.62% probability to go under. To win the SEC, they are 100 to win. That's a plus 10,000. That is 0.99% implied probability. Now, for why they might go over, you got a veteran defense. Eight returning starters. You got a strong defensive line that's anchored by uh, TJ Sanders and Alex Huntley. Uh, South Carolina's defense is poised to be tough, right? They're going to be disruptive. The secondary, uh, you got safeties uh, Smith and Iman Worry. Hope I said that right. That, that could be a solid backbone, right? Uh, you got an improved offensive line. Last year, they struggled, but they do return four starters. They added some key transfers in. It should stabilize the protection, help ignite the running game, uh, led by, of course, Arkansas transfer Rocket Sanders. That kind of improvement can help you win some of these tight games, right? This is in a favorable early schedule. You got four likely wins in non-conference play, and then you play against Vanderbilt at, I mean, it's, you could build a solid foundation, right? If they pull off an upset or two, especially at home, you can easily reach six wins to get over this win total. But, I mean, you look at the beginning, Old Dominion, then you got to play at Kentucky. You get LSU at home. You get Akron at home. By week before Ole Miss. But on the back end, I mean, you see what they got here. Wofford, uh, Vanderbilt's in there. I mean, there's all kinds of spots here. All kind of spots. So, and then Clemson at the very end. Uh, as for why they might go under... Quarterback uncertainty, right? Spencer Rattler is gone, and yes, everybody is is pretty sold on Lenore Sellers. Uh, Robbie Ashford is the backup, so at least you've got some experience back there, but you don't really have a proven passer, uh, and that could be an issue against some of these stronger SEC defenses. If they realize that you are a one-trick pony, that's all she wrote. All she wrote. Uh, you could have offensive line issues. Like, you got a bunch of returning starters, but the offensive line was among the worst in the country last year. There's no guarantee of improvement, right? Uh, if the line struggles again, the entire offense could be in trouble, even with somebody as athletic as Lenore Sellers back there. And the SEC schedule is brutal, right? I mean, it's this is a daunting schedule. You got road games against Alabama, against Oklahoma. Uh, you play at Clemson, and that's not even a, a conference game. You got games uh, at home against LSU, against Texas A&M. Uh, Missouri comes in. I mean, it, they're they're likely to be underdogs in most of their conference games. If you're trying to get to six wins, that's going to be a bit of an issue. I've got them power rated number 42. Conference rating, I've got them at number 13. Projected wins, I've got them at 5.8. So slightly over, but not quite to six. Uh, four games as a projected favorite, and I've got six toss-up games. So six one-possession games on the schedule that could feasibly go either way. The Tennessee Volunteers. Current win total is 8.5. That's down from the 9.5 opener. Odds of minus 172 to go over. That's 63.24% probability. And plus 140 to go under. That is 41.67% probability on that. Conference odds, plus 1,600. That is an implied probability of 5.88%. So 16 to 1 to win the SEC. Now for why Tennessee might go over their win total... Uh, a pretty elite defensive line, right? James Pierce Jr., uh, he leads this defensive line. They are one of the best in the country. They are going to be able to disrupt a whole lot of offenses here. Deep rotation, you got proven playmakers there. 
they this team can dominate in the trenches, right? If you can do that, you can keep opposing offenses off balance. Gonna give it'll give the ball back to Nico even more, right? And speaking of uh, highly touted five star recruit Nico Yamaliava, he's got the arm talent and the accuracy to unlock Josh Heupel's high octane offense. If he can quickly adapt, he can find chemistry with a talented receiving core. And by God, did he look good against Iowa in the bowl game? Uh, they could certainly get back to being explosive. This could look very similar to the 2022 Tennessee offense. Uh, and then they got a favorable schedule, right? They avoid Texas. They avoid Ole Miss. They avoid LSU. I, they've got a relatively easier path in the SEC. You got nine winnable games on the schedule, uh, maybe 10. I think you got 10 winnable games on the schedule. And then uh, aside from that, I mean, you, you got Ole Miss, Alabama, and Oklahoma all right there at home. This is what are we doing? There. I didn't even switch over. Why didn't y'all tell me that? <laughs> Look, you got Oklahoma on the road in week four. You got to buy a week before you go to Arkansas. Then you got Florida at home. Then you got Alabama at home. There's only three significant challenges. Georgia, Oklahoma, and Alabama. Those are the biggest ones. Outside of that, you know, at NC State maybe in week two. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but they got a clear shot at surpassing this win total for sure. Now, for why they might go under, secondary concerns. Just complete overhaul in the secondary. No experience, depth, or significant recruits. That's a that's a major risk, right? Like against some of these stronger passing teams, Alabama, Georgia, Oklahoma, like this defense could be in a... They could get into some higher scoring ball games, Right? Not as big a chance to win, a lot more chance for variance if you can't stop the other team. Uh, you got an inconsistent offensive line, right? They, they do have experience. They struggled to protect Nico in his limited action last year. You know, if they persist, you got a lot of pressure on a young quarterback, right? If he's not able to develop correctly, if he doesn't have time in the pocket, that's going to be an issue. Uh, there are tough early tests, right? You got challenging games. I mentioned the NC State game in week two. Uh, but then you got Oklahoma in week four. You got Alabama in the middle of the schedule. It, it's a young team. If they face some setbacks early, could be could be a bit of an issue. Could derail momentum for sure. Uh, I've got them power rated at number 15. Conference rating is number eight. Projected wins, I've got them at 8.55, so slightly over the eight and a half. Uh, I've got them as a projected favorite in nine games. And, uh, and I've got them in four toss-up games. So we'll see. I'm pretty high on Tennessee this year. I like Nico a lot. I think uh, if the offensive line can protect, they could be really, really explosive. We go on to the Texas Longhorns. Current win total is 10.5. That is the same as the opener. It has sat there the whole time. Odds obviously have been changing. Odds right now to go over plus 144. It's 40.98% probability and minus 178 to go under. That probability is over 64%. Conference odds are plus 350. Uh, that's 22.22% probability to win the SEC. Now, for why Texas might go over, you got elite returning experience. They bring back 90% of its offensive uh, production. That includes uh, Quinn Ewers, four starters on the offensive line, makes them one of the most experienced and cohesive units in the country. Uh, Ewers, we expect him to improve even more. The offense should be able to continue to be explosive. You got an upgraded receiving core, right? You lost three NFL caliber receivers, but they restocked the wide receiver room with top-tier transfers and, and some blue-chip recruits. You got Isaiah Bond coming in from Alabama. You got John T. Cook. Uh, the depth and the talent could give viewers the weapons that he needs to take the offense to the next level to be able to get over these red zone woes that they've had uh, under you know, Steve Sarkeesian. The schedule is favorable, especially when you compare it to Oklahoma's, right? They avoid the top SEC teams, Alabama, LSU, Ole Miss, uh, they play five of the six worst projected teams in the conference. You got key games at home and a, a manageable road slate. I mean, you get Georgia at home. Granted, it's the week after Red River, but you get the point. It, the schedule sets up all right. Now, for why they might go under, defensive line issues, right? Tavondre Sweat and Byron Murphy ain't walking through that door. That's a massive void in the middle of the defense. And without their dominance up front, probably not going to be able to replicate last year's run defense. So against teams like Michigan, against Georgia, et cetera, that could be an issue. Uh, the secondary, it's kind of an issue, right? It was already a weak spot. They lost some key players. Now they're going to be relying on transfers and guys that have not proven it at this level. Now, if they can shore up the back end, you know, 
they should be maybe they'll be all right but against some of these better passing offenses in the SEC uh it could it could make some of these games a little more tight than they should be and then of course you got tough non-conference games you're going to Michigan in week two I mean that is difficult right and and Michigan is going to run the ball and if you're trying to retool the defensive line that's not exactly what you want to see on the schedule in week two especially going up to the big house uh you you get a loss there in week two that certainly slows down momentum and yeah you get UTSA ULM and Mississippi State right after that but I'm it, it, it puts that little bit of doubt in your head even before Red River, even before Georgia comes in. I've got them power rated number four. I've got them number two in the SEC. And their projected wins, I've got them at 9.83. So I've got them going under the 10.5. Uh, I've got them as a projected favorite in 11 games, and I've got them in four toss-ups. The toss-ups, A&M on the road, Michigan on the road, Georgia at home, and Oklahoma. Yeah. That's a difficult spot. Difficult Difficult spot. The Texas A&M Fighting Aggies are next. Eight and a half is the current win total. Odds of minus 132 to go over, 56.9% probability there, and plus 106 to go under. That's 48.45, or sorry, 48.54% implied probability on that one. To win the conference, they are 14 to 1. That is 6.67% probability to win the SEC. Um, this is a this is an interesting team, right? Why they might go over their win total? Obviously, Mike Oko comes in and inherits a defensive front that is just loaded with talent. That includes Shamar Turner, and uh, and they brought in Nick Scourton from Purdue. They should be able to dominate opposing offenses for sure, especially in Week One against Notre Dame, who has five underclassmen that are starting. I mean, that is just a mess. So if you got strength in the trenches, uh, Mike Oko knows what he's doing with the defense. If he's got talent on defense, he's going to be able to get those guys coached up, and it's that's it's pivotal or pivotal, pivotal for Texas A&M in basically every game. They're going to be relying on that defensive line. Uh, the schedule is favorable; like they avoid Alabama, Georgia, Ole Miss, Tennessee. I mean, it's one of the softest SEC schedules, and they certainly have the talent to be able to exploit that. Right? Uh, you got key matchups at home. You get Texas and Oak, or excuse me, Texas and LSU at home. Um, they are well positioned to capitalize here. Uh, and then, of course, improved offensive potential, right? Connor Wigman is back under center. You got a new offense coordinator in Colin Klein coming in from Kansas State. It brings a fresh approach. The Aggies' offense has the potential to be dynamic, right? Uh, yeah, they lost Ruben Owens at running back in the offseason or in the uh, fall camp, but they still got plenty of depth at running back. They got plenty of depth at wide receiver, even after losing Evan Stewart. So they got the tools to be able to exploit defenses consistently. Now, for why they might go under. Eh, Wegman has a bit of an injury history, right? So if he's not able to stay healthy, that's going to be an issue. Um, and, I, you know, it, this is certainly an offense that's going to require some more mobility uh, if Colin Klein runs something similar to that RPO heavy scheme that he ran at Kansas State. The offensive line, you know, there's talent, but obviously the interior offensive line is a question mark. You got key departures, you got unproven transfers that need to step up. If the unit struggles, that could be an issue for both the passing game and the running game uh, in that RPO scheme. I've, I've mentioned schemes. Adapting to new schemes is going to be a bit of an issue. you, know, you got a brand-new coaching staff, significant roster turnover, especially in the secondary on defense. Uh, you got a risk of early-season growing pains, right? If the team does not adapt, you got Florida in Week 3 on the road. you got Notre Dame in Week 1. Like These are difficult games. Bowling Green, you should be able to out-talent them, but Bowling Green is a serious team in the MAC. The schedule is not it's not the easiest. I know that. Like it, It's one of the softest in the SEC, but if you ain't clicking on all cylinders, this could be an issue. I mean, LSU at home, on the road at South Carolina. You play at Auburn the week before you play Texas. Like There are landmines here. And now, I've got them projected uh, to – well, I've got them rated number 16. I've got them number 9 in the conference. My projected wins are 8.05, so I've got them slightly under that 8.5. 10 games as a projected favorite, and seven toss-up games. So seven coin flip games, one possession games, whatever you would like to call them. But uh, that's going to be, it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough. Finally, last one on the board, the Vanderbilt Commodores. That's right. Current win total sits at two and a half. That's right. And it opened at two and a half. Kind of, kind of interesting here. Odds of minus 200 to go over, right? Implied probability of 66.67% there. 
and plus 160 to go under. Implied probability of 38.46% on that. To win the conference, plus 50,000. That's 500 to 1. 0.2% probability to win the SEC. That's not going to happen, right? But they could go over their win total because it's only 2.5. Why would they be able to do that? Well, one, they've got a new offensive approach, right? You brought in uh, offensive coordinator Tim Beck from uh, New Mexico State. You also brought in his quarterback, Diego Pavia. You brought in his head coach, Jerry Kill, as an analyst. Vanderbilt is poised to run a pretty creative kind of option-heavy offense that teams are not going to be fully prepared for, right? Like, Pavia's dual threat ability brings in a dimension that that Vandy has sorely, sorely lacked. Uh, The defense should be improved, right? Head coach Clark Lee has taken over as the defensive coordinator. He gets back to his roots, what he's been good at. He's focusing on the defense. And the defense has been Vandy's Achilles heel, right? You got key returners coming back like C.J. Taylor, and you got new transfers in the secondary. There is potential for some big improvement here, especially in the pass defense. And then you got a manageable non-con schedule, which is why I'm surprised at the the two and a half here. Uh, they they face a relatively soft non-con schedule outside of hosting Virginia Tech in Week One, but you got winnable games against Alcorn State, against Ball State, and even on the road at Georgia State, right? These are a solid chance to secure three wins early in the year. And if they do that, you could be over this win total uh, by the middle of October, right? Now, for why they might go under, talent drain, right? You got a lot of inexperience here. They lost their top three uh, wide receivers, lost some key defensive players to the portal and the NFL. Uh, It leaves significant gaps in both the offense and the defense, right? Relying on transfers and, and unproven talent is never a guarantee especially against SEC competition. The offensive line, questions there, struggled mightily last season, ranked near the bottom of the FBS in run blocking. Now they're going to face further challenges because they lost two starters this year. If you don't improve a bunch up front, offense might struggle to protect the quarterback. If if you can't establish the run game in Tim Beck's offense, that's going to be an issue. Just saying. And the, the schedule is brutal, right? And maybe it's maybe we're looking at it through Vandy's eyes. But this is incredibly unforgiving, right? You got nine games where they're going to be double digit underdogs, I believe. Um, it, the talent gap is substantial. And even trying to find one upset victory in here, that's going to be pretty difficult. Uh, maybe you get South Carolina at home. Maybe. But I mean, you listen to this. If you're a if you're a Vanderbilt fan, this is not what you wanted. You wanted a Mississippi State. You wanted a, you know, something along those lines, Arkansas. But instead, you got Missouri, Alabama, at Kentucky, Texas, at Auburn, South Carolina, LSU, Tennessee. I'd find me the wins. I got no idea. I've got them power rated number 83. Conference rating is dead last, number 16. I do have them at 3.62, so I've got them well over the two and a half. Uh, three games as a projected favorite. Three toss-up games. Uh, this schedule is just absolutely absurd. Like, I hate it for them. Hate it for him. Now, as far as the conference title game, I think we're going to see a rematch. I don't think Texas is going to be able to just walk into the SEC, even with the the softer schedule, and waltz into the title game. Something still scares me about Ole Miss and that high number of transfers. The LSU defense, I don't think, is, is quite there, and I think there's going to be a regression on offense. I think Tennessee's got a chance here, but I think we're probably going to see Georgia and Alabama again in Atlanta. And I, this time I'm going to take Georgia – to win the SEC, to get rid of some nightmares by finally beating the Tide in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. All right, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Like the video. Of course, subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the pod. There's stuff over there that you can't get over here. And, of course, you want to keep the channel growing? I would certainly appreciate that. You can become a member at bettingcfb.com. For winning cures everything, God bless college football. And, hey, let's have one hell of a season, right? Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me, Gary, at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.